Hi there and a very warm welcome to this week's video in which we are again continuing our series in beta features of Octane 2025.1. This time we are looking at a feature that has been re-ramped of the chaos texture. And this is very interesting and can provide a good value to you. So without further ado, let's grab your coffee and let's jump right in. And welcome to Cinema 4D land. Let's change up things a little bit. So this time there will be no preview because of two reasons. First, I never talked about the chaos texture in depth, so I will do that in the first part of this video. And second, I think all of the video will be rather short, so you can endure watching it to the end. But anyway, if you just want to see the new features, you can jump to the timestamp that's listed below. Let's cut straight to the chase and explore our very simplistic scene a little. So we have a landscape object and a daylight system here. And on the landscape, there's this material where we are going to explore our chaos texture. Let's bring in the node that is required to create chaos and oh wonder, it's called chaos. Here we go, double click and then assign it to the diffuse here. Here we go. Let's also bring in a texture and let's go with a stone texture here. So this is a displacement texture of stone. Let me display that for you on the landscape directly and you can see it looks like this. Now, since this is a Cinema 4D primitive object, it already has UVs, so the texture here fits perfectly. Let's say the structure here is a little bit too big and we want to create more detail. What we can do is go to the displacement texture, hit UV transform, click that, and then go down with the scale, for example, to 0.25. While this creates more detail and smaller structures, it also repeats itself, so it tiles. And this, of course, is usually not what you want. To help that, let's introduce some chaos. The choker would be browed. So let me take the chaos texture and plug it into the diffuse, and then the displacement map and plug it into the chaos. To keep things clean, I want to rearrange the transform from the texture to the chaos as well. Here we go. And now you can see the outcome here is a little bit more chaotic. Everything becomes chaos. Let's go over the chaos texture settings, which are, by the way, the same as in the new version. To better see what we are doing here, let's also exchange the texture to, you might have guessed it, a UV map. Okay, now let's finally have a look what the chaos texture is actually doing. So first of all, I want to get to the blending exponent and set it to a rather high value to expose the underlying structure. Let's go closer with the camera and you can see that the chaos texture is actually a hex tile randomizer. And with the first setting here, you can actually set the size of the hex grid. So smaller and larger. Notice that the texture size will stay the same during this whole process. Let's go back to the default 4 and talk about the coverage. As you can see, every hex tile is only displaying a small amount of the UV texture. The coverage controls how much the texture is allowed to move inside of the pattern. So a coverage of 0 means that all the textures are at the same place. And the higher the value, the more randomized those textures become. I personally would set this to be the default of 1. I don't know why the default here is 0.5. I think you already know the blending exponent feature because I showed it in the beginning. Basically, this is the blending amount between those hexes and a lower value here blends them more. So a value of 1 just is one big blending soup. Of course, it depends on the texture and the intent, how much you want to blend. And there it is, one of those unintentional rhymes again. Now the next feature, especially in those cases where you have a high blend value, it's hard to see the actual scale of the tiles. So you can show the tile structure here to have a better understanding over the blend. Next, if you are using SDR images and you are not satisfied with how the blend is looking, you might try the histogram invariant blend which is blending the texture, I think at least, with a gamma 2.2 instead of blending it linearly. So you can try which works best for you. And last but not least, you might have noticed that those UV textures are all oriented the same. 
And this is because the enable rotation was disabled. So let's actually enable it. And you can see now those UV maps are also rotated in different directions. Going back to our original camera and also our original texture, you can see that now we have a truly chaotic outcome. And this view concludes our recap last time on chaos texture. I hope you are now curious what new features came in. So let's export this scene to the standalone and have a look. And welcome to the standalone. By the way, if you don't know how to export, I showed this in my first video. The link is in the upper right corner right now. To activate the rendering, let's click on the render target here. And we should see the same as in Cinema 4D, our landscape with the chaos texture. To get to the material, we need to double click on the landscape right here. And this pops open the material with our chaos. If we click on it, the preview here is a little bit, well, chaotic. This is because it also inherits the inputs. So let's flap those down. So we end up with just the chaos settings. Let's go through this list and talk about the new features. The first one being the grid deformation. Now to show you the grid deformation a little bit better, let's get to another new feature first, which is the show hexagonal tiling. So we can see what the tiles are actually doing. With this enabled, we can also turn on the grid deformation, but there's nothing happening. And this is because we need a texture to deform those. So let's go with a standard noise. This is already deforming. You just don't see it because it's very large. So let's make it smaller, 0.25 for example. And if I move the noise through the grid, you can see it clearly. This feature comes with a couple of additional settings. For example, the noise grid weight, which adjusts the strength of the deformation. And if you're not satisfied with the pattern, you can also change the noise seed to get a random pattern distribution here. What's really important to know is that we are not distorting our texture. This is looking like before. What we are distorting here is the boundaries at which we are blending. This is basically a tactic to hide those hexagonal lines a little bit better if they would show up in your texture blending. The next couple of settings are affecting the texture, however. For example, the mapping seed is now giving us control over the seed of the coverage here. So if we set the coverage to zero, of course, all the seeds are the same. But if we leave it at one, then we can choose whatever random distribution we want here. The next new feature is the tile transform and it does exactly as it says. So let's have a look. If we move the texture, it is moving and repeating within those hexagonal tiles. You can use it to, for example, animate endless water streams or whatever else you can come up with. For the next feature, let me introduce you to the UV map again, because this is best shown with a directional map. And the next feature I'm talking about is the random rotation steps. What this is doing is taking the above value here and dividing it into definite steps. So if we want to have 90 degree stepping, we need to divide 360 by four. And you can see now we have a grid-like pattern with our UV map but the UV map is twisted in different directions. I personally would prefer if this would be a rotation step angle and not the division of the above value here. But I think this is another very useful feature addition. Another small but welcome feature is to disable the blending altogether. Dependent on the texture and also the grid deformation, it might be enough to hide the transition from one grid cell to another, so you don't even need the blending. With our UV map, this is definitely not the case, but it is a very challenging candidate for such operations anyways. And as it's expected for such videos, I kept the best two features for the climax. For the first of those two features, we need to introduce yet another texture, and this is a normal map. Let me plug that in and also set it to non-color data. Due to the rotation in the chaos texture here, we can see that the normal is also rotated which will lead to wrong results in the normal mapping. I have a video about rotating the normal map in the upper right corner if you're interested. Now the really cool thing is that the chaos texture detects if you're using it as a normal map and then corrects itself. 
So if I unplug this from the diffuse here, you can see that those normals are looking nice and bumpy how they should be. So it's internally correcting for the rotation. So if you compare this with the old version in Cinema 4D that doesn't adjust for rotation, it looks just plain wrong. Of course, in a setup like this, you would have one chaos texture just dedicated for the normals and another one just dedicated for the diffuse. And now let's switch to a completely new scene for the last feature. And welcome to the anvil scene. So I've been modeling and animating an anvil in one of my scenes lately, and I think this might be a good object to show the last feature on. For this, it's important to know that the most limiting factor of the old chaos texture was that it solely worked on UVs. And this comes with the old enemy of every texturing artist, seems like here and here. As you are a smart audience, you probably know what's coming, so what you can do is actually use a triplanar projection on it. Of course, this is a bit tedious to set up. But once we are there and adjusted the transform, we can blend those seams away. So we have a much more uniform look over the whole object. And of course, with this possibility, why stop there? We can just use one of my OSL scripts here to randomize the texture per object. By the way, I have a dedicated tutorial for this. The link, as always, is in the upper right corner. So basically, what we have now is a procedural super shader, where we, with only a small texture, are able to create an astonishing amount of detail, which is not repetitive, aka not tiling, so much more like what things are doing in the real world. When I tried this first and it actually worked, it blew my mind, so I hope it blew your mind too, at least just a little bit. As always, I couldn't help to bring in all the details in this tutorial, which made it longer, so now I'll not drag this on further, but thank those people who made this video possible, my patrons. Especially my 50 euro tier subscribers, Chiels Augustinen and Leon Studio TV. Also, of course, a huge thank you for my 15 euro tier subscribers, Dui Jim. For the Thieves, Render King, Alessandro Bonchio, Alessio De Vecchi, Ami Sheetreed, Aram Sadikian, BVR, Chris Fritschi, Christian Grajewski, Erbe Plus Academy, Eva Nilsson Tavares, Joel Mackemer, John Edward, Chris Clemson, Nico Straub, Part 1 of 2, Raphael, Ralf, Raiko, Reshock, Shamos Johnson, Shiro 2049, Terry Wayne Ranson, and Yasin Rupp. Welcome, my friends of Well Cultured Anarchy. I'm not sure if you can call chaos anarchy, I'm sure some people will disagree. Now on to the interesting bit. What I asked myself during the whole tutorial was, does it actually compute? Is it understandable what the chaos texture is actually for? Or would you need an extra tutorial building a realistic scene with it? As always, I am happy for feedback if you have some. Today I'll make it short because I'm not feeling too well lately. So thank you very much for watching this long. If you want to show your support, Let's post a choker emoticon down in the comments below. With this, I'm wishing you an amazing start into the week, or if you're watching this later, a great time ahead. And I say, let's introduce a little chaos in your shading. Bye!